Hello everyone and welcome back to our Friday video. Um, and I'm going to clear something up. The uh, the mystery animal, uh, the cage that I made. And uh, yeah, so we took the cage to our friend's place uh, where we're going to pick up the mystery animals. And... Yeah, we had to leave the cage there. Uh, okay, I'll do a bit of explaining. Okay, so it was a pair of uh, pregnant pigs, just ordinary pigs with a big long snout, not like our Cooney Coonies. Um, yeah, so we took the cage there, put the cage in the, in their pen, which is about two acres, maybe a bit more, and uh, we couldn't catch them. <laughs> we couldn't get anywhere near them. We've had no chance, no luck so far. So uh, we think it could have been the presence of me and Andrea, who were strangers to the pigs. Uh, so what we're going to do is leave the cage there, leave it with um, the owner of the pigs and we'll see how it goes. He's going to try and make something, do, uh, corral them into it or whatever, but uh, we're not holding out much hope because they won't come anywhere near us. So no longer a mystery, but um, I, don't, I, I don't think we'll be getting them, but we'll see. But everything's ready for them, but uh, yeah, you know, pigs can be stubborn and... Yeah, it was too dangerous for us and too dangerous for the pigs as well. Um, we don't want to harm any animals. Uh, yeah, they can be feisty. So instead of doing a um, video of unloading the pigs, putting them in their pen, etc, etc. We're going to do a catch up video of our new naked neck uh, chickens. What's happening with uh, Brigitte, our um, black goat who's pregnant and all the other animals as well. So here they are. Just mummy and son, and a very pregnant Brigitte, who's not cut up, which is unusual. So Brigitte here, it's got her udders have dropped, etc. But we don't. Hello, mate. Nothing seems to be happening, does it? Why not? Hey, eh? why not? What are you doing? Yeah, so uh, we don't know how much longer she's got. Um, some days she looks really big and fat, other days she looks like she's got nothing. So, but she must be pregnant. You see her teats have, have um, whoop, done like that. See her teats have dropped and her udder's filling, but uh, there we go. We have no idea what you're doing, do we? I don't know if you can see this. Um, the strands of web on the trees, telltale signs that uh, the uh, remaining caterpillars in the tree have come down, yeah? Um, so that's good. We were going to fell all these, but, but we didn't because uh, we didn't want, you know, nests full of caterpillars hitting the floor because um, that would make a right mess. So, what are you doing? What are you doing? Come and show us. Come and show us. Come on. Go on. Wait. Stay. Go on. Get on. So Max is in fine fettle, aren't you? Eh? Still 
still loving his new bed. And his new house will be over here, but, but, yeah, sit, right, sit, sit. Don't sit and walk, sit. So we've had people saying that Max would have um, ticks and fleas and stuff in his big thick coat. Uh, he has a collar on for Leishmania. Yeah, here, along with his other collar, this white collar is for Leishmaniosis. Um, weirdly, Max, as you can see, has he never gets any seeds or anything stuck in his fur at all. Uh, which is really strange. He stays really clean and really healthy. Uh, obviously, he has injections and stuff and has all his standard things, but yeah, super healthy and super clean. I can't believe how clean he stays. No, we can't believe it, can we? We can't believe it. See? So, uh, all the rain we've had, the pond is filled up which um, I'm a bit annoyed about because I could have drained it right out, pressure washed it all out, cleaned it, and then uh, it would have filled back up on its own. But while we're here, I just want to show you... Um, it's a hard life. What a hard life Gilly has, yeah? He spends half his day sunbathing here and half his day eating. That's all he does. <gasps> Gilmore! Oh. <laughs> uh, Quinn, on the other hand, seems to pick up every single piece of dirt Dust, seed, dirt, grain in his hair. Uh, yeah, he seems very good at it, don't you, Queen? Windswept. You pretty boy with the eyeliner? Hi right, guys, here's some orange juice for you, look. Yeah, these guys are doing fine. It's a bit of an issue with their house, but I'll show you that. So obviously I need to get the roof on here to make the goat house waterproof. The pig's house underneath is waterproof. There is a little bit coming in around here. You can see, look, uh, but it's only because it, last night it was torrential, so you're happy, aren't you guys? You're all dry, yeah, yeah, aren't you? Soon? So, a uh, little bit of wet straw we had in there, or damp, so we put fresh straw in with them, and uh, we got no more oh god, no more rain uh, for a week or so now. So by that time the roof will be on, this will all be rendered and everything will be lovely and waterproof. So we won't be getting this. That's because the torrential rain we had last night has been driving against the wall and through the window. <laughs> so everything's dry now. A little bit of wet, wet straw we took out, but they're fine. And they always just think I've got food. Because they're pigs, they always think you've got food. Yeah, except if I fell over and they eat me. <laughs> They don't care. Actually, they wouldn't. They are really well-behaved pigs. I know they're very. Good. Oh, and they stand, stand on your feet. I think we should get them a, get them a football. Yes, yeah, so I think we should get them a football. <laughs> so a uh, little bit of wet straw we had in there or damp so we put fresh straw in with them and uh, we got no more oh god no more rain uh, for a week or so now so 
by that time the roof will be on, this will all be rendered and everything will be lovely and waterproof. So we won't be getting this. That's because the torrential rain we had last night had been driving against the wall and through the window. <laughs> so everything's dry now. A little bit of wet, wet straw we took out, but they're fine now. And they always just think I've got food. Because they're pigs, they always think you've got food. Yeah. Like I said, if I fell over, they'd eat me. <laughs> they don't care. Actually, they wouldn't. They're really well-behaved pigs. I know, they're very good. Oh, and they stand on your feet. Toe. What's that with you? <laughs> I think we should get them, a, get them a football. Yes, I think we should get them a football. Get a football! <laughs> so the garlic are doing well, and the mooly, or what else are they called, Ant? I know them as mooly. Uh, Chinese radishes anyway, they're doing they, fine. They can't, <laughs> Hans for some reason has a lupin in here. It's self-seeded. And uh, there's some chickpeas as well left over, so chickpeas will stick a small frost, although this one didn't. Uh, no, I think uh. it's doing alright, but we've got flowers on it. So the strawberry bed's doing okay. Uh, we have gooseberries here, gooseberries here. And we have a red currant, I do believe, and a black currant. Sadly yeah, we've sadly we've lost probably a white currant and another black currant for some reason we don't know, and all the raspberries are doing okay. Yeah, but those green on them. Green up. Boris. Boris. Oh, look at his eye. What? Clean his eye. Oh yeah. So let's see how things are doing in here. We have life, Jim. Oh, we have life. So what's coming up? Marigold. <laughs> Marigolds. <laughs> this seems to have survived. Yeah, I'm going to give them. Oh, look, we have a little bit of a swede coming up. Oh, what's that? Swede. Swedes. And cauliflower. We need cauliflower because they're getting yeah. really expensive. They're Two, nearly three. Two euros fifty. A, two euros sixty a kilo now. Something that's even more, I think, yeah. isn't it? We have bean movement. Where? Oh yeah, bean movement. Pea movement. And over there. Arugula. Yeah. What's that? Rocket. But that's the stuff that Cindy brought over. Oh, arugula. As in, uh, in Portugal, that would be rucula. Yeah, Rugula or or rocket. Yep. Yeah, and then and nothing else. Oh, that's cool. pretty and what's good. What's that? What's that? That's spinach. Spinach. Ah, that's New Zealand spinach. Yes. Babe, we have like tons of it. Um, Why do you need to propagate more? Babies. Because you can. Because I can. <laughs> and a quick update on the uh, obviously the dragon fruit and the pineapple and all these exotic fruits that we're planting in here. Uh, we're waiting for the nursery, the local nursery, Viveira and Vaz, uh, to get them in because they don't get them in until springtime, obviously. So we've got a few empty beds here apart from, obviously, uh, okay, let's do this, cilantro or coriander and basil. So I bought a little grafting tool and uh, I grafted this piece of almond onto an old stock of almond. What happened was the, um, this is almond rootstock, yeah, but the almond that was on it um, died off, the actual graft died. So I've regrafted on, this graft was here, I've regrafted on to the rootstock another piece of almond and it started to bud. So it looks like that's taken, but it came off our almond tree there. So um, yeah, if that takes, we'll cut the rest of these off and uh, then we've got another proper fruit and almond again.
which is great. So it's raining today, so we're doing indoor work, and a job I've been asked by quite a few people, and uh, Jane Green from our Perfect Peace of Portugal, uh, she's already had a bit of advice, so it's it's um, fitting insulation and, and some form of backing, whatever you want, to the metal doors that you find everywhere here in Portugal. I mean, every house I've been, in central Portugal, every house I've been to has this type of door. So uh, I'll show you what I mean. Yeah, so because it's raining, we're going to do this little indoor job. What I'm going to do is um, insulate and put TNG on the back of this door. But because the TNG I have spare on top of here, it's a different size than this one. I'm going to put it vertically because it's a door anyway, so it'll be fine. It'll all look like pine in the end. But um, yeah, I'll show you what you need to do. A lot of people have been asking how to uh, put a backing on this door or the easiest way of doing it or whatever. So I'll just show you. Simple stuff. So to start with, we've cleaned off the back of the door as best I can. I did have some insulation stuck on it previously, um, but that wasn't a good job. So here we go. Cut your piece of timber that fits in between the edges of the door. But as you can see, there are welds holding this sheet panel on in between the angle iron. Yeah, if you put your piece of wood over those welds, it's all going to be a bit wobbly. So what I'd recommend is just come in slightly below them yeah like that and then what I'll do is mark where this timber is and then drill three holes through it yeah so hang on you just draw a pencil line underneath it like so there so where we've got a pencil line now I'm going to drill a hole one here one in the middle and one there And now I'm going to go and get a sharp drill bit. Probably a lot harder to drill through because it's been hardened where the weld has been. Yeah, so maybe not drill next to a weld. So that's three holes done in the top uh, from a top piece of timber. What we're going to do now is drill the other. Uh, I'm going to put a piece here, a piece halfway across here, and a piece at the bottom. Uh, so I'll just go and drill all those now and then show you the next stage. So that's all the holes drilled. What I'm going to do now is just um, put a bigger drill bit on and countersink these holes a little bit. Yeah. Like so. Get in the hole. Like so. Get in the hole. Yeah. So the idea of countersinking your hole is when you put your screw in. Oh. Like so. It goes, it's flush. I'll put it from the other side a minute. It's flush with the uh, metal on the front, or well, flush-ish, flush-ish, it's a new word. So that's all the buttons fixed on, uh, where I need them, yeah, uh, and a couple around the lock. And I've got some more work to do on this lock later, but I'll, first of all we'll cut a length and uh, nail it on and see what it looks like. But before we put the wood on, we'll uh, make sure we put the insulation on, eh? So, as you just saw, I nearly forgot to um, fit the insulation, but that's a, that's a fairly easy affair. So, I'll pick a square here. Uh, that's the best way to do it. So, you can see. Go there, square in the corner. We've got a line to go with here. We'll take that measurement, continue, and just cut that with a, with a sharp knife. You know, I use a, a, a very thin bladed knife 
because then it's really easy just to slice through the insulation and get it to fit. I need to mark the other end. So that'll be that distance, which is 260. I'll mark this end 260, like so. I wouldn't, all, wouldn't normally be doing this all at this height. Hey here, and then um, we'll get a straight edge. And where we're 260 there, and the mark on the bottom. Just mark it with the back of the knife. I mean, obviously, it's going to be much better to do this on a bench or something, but. The width and the length. Just going to be there. We do the same again. Or you guess it. I'm just going to guess square. Something like that. call an interference fit. So I'll do all the rest in a minute. Okay so uh, we have and I no doubt a lot of people that have moved to Portugal with these steel doors have found a bit of an issue with opening them from the outside. Most of the doors I've seen have a piece of string coming through the door and a hole in the door that pulls the latch on the inside. But what I've done is uh, cut the latch off it's a brass latch that was on the inside only. Drilled a hole for it and cut a slot in the outside, yeah? So what I'm doing now, I'll just turn it up a little bit. On this end, I'll put a locking nut on. And I'm winding this through. So as you can see on the door now, the threaded bar is winding through the outside. And then I'll this, screw this nut up. So, oh, sorry. And then what I'll do is put another nut on this side, pinch them tight over that, and then to open the door, from the inside I can do that, and from the outside I'll put a knob on here so I can open the door like that from the outside. Oh, ooh, very smart. Hopefully. So there we go, I've done the lock thing, the mechanism we just saw, uh, the door is fully insulated, now I can start putting the boards on, at last. Um, but there we go, yeah, this is all working really well. So yeah, pleased with that. Right, let's board it up.
so there we go unfortunately <laughs> I've, I thought I had more than this I've run out I need two more pieces I've run out so I need to get it tomorrow so I'll finish it and when I I'll get some trims as well for the outside and for the window uh, so yeah I'll have to continue to be continued so as you can see I'm back with Tony and Nikki uh, I've got to put some more blocks up here and behind me I've got to build uh, where are we? This, this corner up so we can put a lintel uh, over the top, yeah? And something I should also point out to you. This is uh, two of our friends' dog. Freddy! Freddy, yes it is. Um, th they were subscribers, no friends. They've asked us to look after Freddy and because I was a bit concerned about the fencing that um, the fencing isn't complete at our place. Our friends Tony and Nicky have agreed to have Freddie in with their dog, Harvey, and um, they're having a whale of a time. So there we go, I'll turn this around and show you what we've been doing. We've added a little bit to there and this this block in the top is uh, turned upside down and filled with concrete so we've got a concrete pad to put the lintel on which will span across here. That's the same, a con that's filled with concrete so there's a concrete pad to put the lintel on there. And we built this corner up like so. So the next job is to uh, lintel up here, yeah, across to there, 2.4 meter gap, so probably a 3 meter lintel, something like that. Fill that end in and then from the lintel up we're going with these lightweight clay blocks because we've got some left over and why not. So here we go, I'm fitting the draft excluder and the trim that goes around the edges and the window obviously. and. Uh, I'm doing something a bit delicate, which isn't normally me, but um, just to make the trim, the door's a bit buckled, etc. So to make the trim fit, I'm using these little tack nails, yeah? But I'm drilling a hole first <laughs> with this. I won't go in focus. Which is a 
1.5 millimeter <laughs> drill bit and then just hammering the nails in where's the hole So there we have it, uh, door complete-ish, um, what I probably need to do, I found some door knobs of old doors I had, is uh, make them fit properly, I know they slide to open instead of turn, but you know, talk about, that's unique, I've got a, bit of a little trim to go around here, and uh, I've got to finish off this, and this, but yeah, and this and 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 uh so there we go and oh just before i go uh big thank you big thank you to tony and tracy for bringing me some boxes four boxes of these fantastic screws and we do a big thank you <laughs> a big thank you to uh, Mohammed and Caroline, I think it's Caroline, I'm pretty sure it's Caroline, but uh, they brought this on a little visit and um, thanks guys, it's awesome. This, so this is uh, one of the orchids that's going in the greenhouse, um, but thanks everyone who's been so kind with their we donations and gifts. Sorry? We love prezzies. We love prezzies, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we need a theme tune. Angie in the kitchen. Da, 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 da. Nick and I have the date. Oh, uh, we were kindly given these by Cindy, and as Nick has been a good boy, Nick's been a good boy, so we're going to make him a Nigella <laughs> sticky toffee pudding. So first of all, I've just got a, a spatula in some boiling water at the moment because I want to warm it up because I need some black treacle. But the, the boiling water is going to go into these dates. And along with that, I need a teaspoon of bicarbonate soda. I don't know why, that's just what my jelly says. So that goes in as well. And I'm going to give that a little mix. If my jelly was in my kitchen, I'd do everything. <laughs> yeah, right. Oh, you wish. Now these dates, I've pitted them and chopped them up because these were pitted dates and what I've done, I've kept the pits because I read that they might germinate. So it's worth a try. I have a greenhouse now, I can plant anything. So these little guys need to juggle in there for a bit. So in the meantime, I need to get black treacle. This is very old. I'm going to use it. It's not going to go off anyway, is it? No, it's... Well, it's just sugar, isn't it? It's molasses, isn't it? Isn't it molasses and tree cores? I don't know. Yeah. I'll stop pontificating. Stop pontificating. Right. Oh. Right. <laughs> I might have to speed it up. Right, so in the bowl... Here. <clears throat> Excuse me, I have some butter, soft butter that's going in, and I'm putting in a couple of scoops of this as well. I actually do three scoops because they don't, uh, doesn't come. I know you should like heat up the spoon and 
proper accurate measuring but we're just going to do a couple of really good dollops like that and put it back on. Yeah, so black treacle is uh, virtually the same as molasses. It's a byproduct of refining sugar. Ah, so once again, it's just carbs and sweetness, isn't it? I haven't actually tried to find it over here in any of the shops. I mean, it might be somewhere around, but uh... right. So the well, this is black treacle, so the black treacle and the butter, I need to somehow cream this together, so this is going to be fun in this. Right, so that's pretty well beaten, so I'm now going to add the sugar. Okay, not quite well. Again. It's really dark, isn't it? There's black treacle and this is... Um, I always put muskrat sugar. Muscovado. It's a really, really rich and tense. So that goes in there. What do you mean they make sugar out of muskrats? Yeah. Wow. That's what gives it the colour. Nice. <laughs> need to put in and I've got two eggs. So put one in at a time. It's amazing how it changes the, the feel of the mixture straight away. In the flour I've got some plain flour. So I've got a couple of teaspoons of baking powder going to that. And then we add that mix too to this. So do a little bit at a time. So this is quite a dry mix at the moment, but this all goes in. So I'm going to get all this flour into this lot. Lovely colour, man. Control. Oh really? Oh my. Mm. It's horrible, is it? Mm. Yeah. Oh dear, you won't like this then. Right. So these are the soaked baits. So these have been in 200 ml of water with a little bit of bicarb soda. So this all goes into the batter and mix as well. So whole lot, water and all. All the dates. There's none left for somebody. That looks good. Perfect. Now I've got the oven on preheating already. Okay. Right, now this goes into my. Okay, Nine deep. inch. As you know, we have to get all the scrapings out. Bowl's too big for me. Right, that's pretty good. There's a little bit there for somebody who might be able to. Uh... It's like having toddlers. Oh, it saves on the washing up as well, I suppose. Right, so that's the 
mixture all in there. And that's going to go into preheated oven, which is 180 degrees C. I don't know what that is in Fahrenheit. 300 and so. 300 and so. 300 and so. 8,914 for about half an hour. So, see it in a minute. Right, while the spongy part is in the oven, we can make the sauce with this. So in goes butter. Sugar. I say this is, a, again, another diet friend. I love the way it does that, it sort of separates. Another diet friendly recipe we have here. <laughs> it's not giving up his secrets. No. <sighs> and a nice dollop of lovely black trickle. So we'll heat this up gently to start with. So I can never remember which one. Is. So this, once this is all melted a little bit, I then am adding some cream and then when the cake comes out the oven, we pour half of this over the cake and that sort of soaks through the cake and gives it like lots of, lots more moisture and the sticky toffiness and additional calories. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so this is all the, the sugar, butter, and black treacle is all melted together nicely. Now we're adding in some cream, like so. Need to wring this out. <laughs> Just give that a gentle stir. And then what we need to do turn the heat up until it starts to boil now obviously I don't need it to boil over I've got to keep stirring this little beauty together so yeah it's nearly getting there so what I do then, once this has reached the boil, you know, started to roll, I'll turn it off. When the cake itself is actually done, half of this gets tipped onto the cake and the rest is then used as a, a pouring sauce for later, so. Oh, quick check on the cake. Good. Really good. So now we stab it all over because the hot saucy stuff will be tipped over, not all of it, but like I said, about a quarter to a half will go over this. So make sure it's nice and um, holy. <laughs> I can think of stabbed a lot, whatever. So it can receive a nice lot of this juicy stuff. Right. rest like I said we'll save for later because that actually gets put over the individual servings and it's Nigella recommends that this gets served not now not straight away it should be left to cool down a little bit Stay there. 
it out. And this is just going to sit here for a little bit. And it's our little treat for later. Wow. So that's it from us uh, this week, guys. This Friday. Friday. <laughs> uh, thanks for watching. Thanks for liking and subscribing and ringing that little notification bell. Ding, ding. And um, yeah, don't forget to check that you're subscribed. And uh, thanks for watching, everyone. And see you in the next one. Bye. Bye. So we've got a cup of tea on the go. But more importantly, to have with a cup of tea <laughs> is a sticky toffee pudding. So, should I just do half each? Yeah, that'll do. You reckon? Yeah. No. Maybe not. That might no. be a little too indulgent. I'll try to do... Is it sticky? It's fairly sticky. Yeah. It's like toffee. So, if I do thirds... Yeah. Yeah, okay. Yeah? Yeah. You don't have to eat it all in okay, one go. Okay, okay, yeah, yeah. That was just a good idea. and toffee. Yeah. Is it a bit missing? No, that's... Or is it in the middle of it? That's the rest of this bit here. Okay. I want the one that's disintegrated. Then. Were they quiet? I was like nervous. I know. <coughs> It's exciting because we haven't had anything like this for a long time. No, we haven't done uh, any sugar products for. Well, that's not. That's not true. true. We do have little cheat days on Fridays. We have we have some sugary stuff, but not a lot. We, so we haven't had something like this for months. <laughs> I said, pour it off the saucepan. Yeah. Thank you. Right. Oh, I could do some cream with this, really. No, oh, I'm having a bit of cream in mine. Because there's none in the uh, sauce, is there? <laughs> there's loads in the sauce. I know. I did just try this. Well, my jello. OMG. I'll take it away, you don't like it, I can tell. Hmm. <sighs> it's so worth doing. Oh wow. Amazing. Great success. Mm -hmm. So, look what we found here. A lovely little ladder snake. I've just disturbed him because he was underneath this door, which I need to use. So, mate, you're going to have to move, sorry. We do have plenty of other places, so... Go on, and go. Go on. <laughs> go on. There we go. Thank you, mate.